So we are now joined on the Fund Your Passion podcast by a man who probably needs no introduction to most of you. But for those of you who don't know, I will introduce him. It is none other than Mr. Jonathan Palmer. Now, Jonathan, wonderful that you're hosting us here. Darren and I are so excited um, to be here in real life with real people and real cars. Well, and not just real cars. I don't think we've ever had such a collection of supercars at Donington Park as we have today. I, I've come up to come and see come and see what this event's all about. And I have to say, I'm hugely impressed. Um, we've just got a plane coming over, so that might make a little bit of noise, but I'm sure the microphone will pick it up. Um, no, it's, the paddock here is absolutely rammed with, um, with supercars. No, we, I mean, we've never had this many here before. Does it? I mean, what, what's your take on people's appetite for this sort of thing? Obviously, the, the whole industry, racing and road, is in a state of change. We're, we're very much looking towards a different type of motoring in the future but when you look at what's around you here and people's appetite what does it say to you? Uh, do you know what I think it's so refreshing to see people just enjoying some fabulous cars and not getting bogged down the climate change is important we know that yeah. but we can't live our lives being continually oppressed by this and so much of what we do in life whether it's that plane taking some holiday makers to Spain or whatever it's going to do and driving the cars and you know it, 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 things can't change overnight um, things are going to change progressively. Um, cars are already getting are, are getting more um, environmentally sensitive. But at the moment, you know, let's enjoy a fabulous era of cars that we have. And actually, you know, I think the next 10 years, until certainly 2030, are going to be an absolute heyday um, for wonderful, normally aspirate or, or um, internal combustion engine cars. Yeah. And, and, and the emotive appeal of these cars is enormous. And it's not going to get replaced, I'm afraid, by electric vehicles. No, and certainly not in a, in a, in a hurry. So looking around the paddock then, what is it that you like? What, where, where's your interest? Because of course you've got such a history of racing as well. Does this, is, does this well, sort of thing uh, yeah, float I, your I, I, I've just been awestruck by Bugattis, by new Maseratis, McLarens, Ferraris, Bentleys. Um, the, what really is the best in, in, in uh, supercars in Britain is here today. I've not seen them before, no, and I'm spoiled for choice. You know, I just go from one to the other. I keep getting in the way of people's cameras, and they try to take a picture. And I'm, I'm there like a, I'm there like a, like an annoying kid who wants to have a look at something. I do think, Jonathan, that you are absolutely correct. I think the next decade is going to be quite a golden era for for cars, for, co for combustion engine cars. I mean, what we're what we're seeing in the marketplace is an absolutely satiable appetite. Um, for the luxury supercar and hypercar um, uh, buyers and people are buying up cars like there is no tomorrow in this sector but there is there's another 10 years or so to go um, and the passion and the drive is still very very much there despite all the changes that are coming in terms of you know moving to EV and I hybrids. I think Dan is going to be more yeah. than ever um, and um, as some people will know uh, six months ago I bought Donington Hall the, yeah. the old wonderful Grade two star listed hall um, in which the circuit was built. This is the oldest road circuit in the country, built in 1931. And um, I'm going to create that, create that, or create from that, yeah. a, um, a wonderful 45 bedroom hotel, but also wonderful car stabling. We're going to have Donington Hall Motor House, yeah. where these sort of cars will be able to be stored as one of the many facilities for this. And I, I'm extremely optimistic about the prospects for this for the future. You know, I think uh, in the same way that if we look at all the aeroplanes in the world, if something would turn, there's nothing that would turn heads more coming over right now probably than a, than a, than a, than a, than a hurricane or a Spitfire. Sure. Yeah. With the, yes. sa with the yeah. sound of a Merlin engine, yeah. a piston engine coming over. Yeah. And I think the cars that people are going to be buying over the next um, 10 years are going to be the pinnacle, I agree with you. I think we're going to be in for an absolute heyday. Yeah. Right people now. Are, we should enjoy it while it's around. People are, people are already seeing I suppose that the end is nigh, so to speak, and are are buying up, you know, the last of the collectible cars, yeah. put into their collections, store them away, and keep them for the for the long term. And uh, well, I agree with you to a large extent, but we don't want to just store them away. We want to come and drive them as well. Oh, yeah, you know? I agree with you. you know, we've got to, we've we were talking about that here. just before. We've been we them all from collect. the climate change point of view. There clearly are going to be synthetic yeah. fuels coming along that are going to be able to rerun in these cars. Yeah. And I'm sure the owners of these cars will be very happy to run them on synthetic fuels whenever they're available. It's not going to happen next year or the year after, but it will within five years, ten years. There'll be synthetic fuels. So you can enjoy these cars long term in the future yeah. and, and, and keep the world clean. Just a quick question. Oh, this is my favourite <laughs> car now that's just started up. 
Um, I think aesthetically that car is just something else. The speed tail. Yeah. Yeah, the McLaren speed tail, in case you're wondering. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Um, just, just give us some timeline because one of the things that we talk about with the owners here is where you get to use some of these cars. Now, obviously, your plans down at the hall, um, you know, will be appealing to many people. So, what's the sort of timeline for progression of that? We're working heavily on it right now. In fact, on Thursday, I've got another big project meeting on it. We've appointed uh, project managers, um, architects for it. And, uh, and I'm, I'm heavily, this is my big project at the moment, the Donington Hall Hotel, and the whole, the whole rejuvenation of, of that part of the estate. Um, it will be the timeline. What you really want to know is when it's going to be done, yeah. and that's going to be March 2023. Amazing. So for the 2023 season, yep. Donington Hall will be open. I'm determined of that. And so that this event, um, I should think we'll be, we'll be quite, I mean, I'm very hopeful that not only will we, will we be fully booked uh, for this event in 2023, but um, it'll also be a wonderful backdrop I think it's to be the a sort of cars that are, that are here now. And uh, no, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be hugely atmospheric. You heard it here first. Jonathan, Thank you, Amanda. I know you're in a rush and I know you've got to yeah, fly got away. I have indeed. Quite literally. Um, we'll be looking out for the helicopter going over <laughs> in just a few minutes' time. But Jonathan Palmer, thank you so much for joining us. Lovely to be with you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks, Darren. Thank you.